This newly updated Titan Arc Thundercrash build melts everything. You're going to be running around getting pretty much infinite grenades, faster abilities in general. You're going to have a bunch of different buffs as well as getting faster supers and overall this build is pretty much perfect for all solo players who want to run the Arc subclass on a Titan during Lightfall this year. Now last season, Titan Arc was good but this season it just got better. With the changes to the modding system, we can now stack so many different mods together which allows us to get our abilities back stupidly quick and not only that, with us being able to jolt targets on every grenade kill and being able to blind enemies with our melee and grenades will mean that we'll be able to stun overloads and unstoppables to allow us more flexibility when it comes to choosing our loadout for the activity we're going into. And since we're using Curios of the Fallen Star, you'll have a decent super that outputs a really good amount of damage which is just great for bosses and champions that you need to kill or melt down quickly for whatever reason. And with the build set up the way we have it, getting that super ain't going to be a problem as long as you have ads around to kill because we're going to be making a ton of orbs with this build too and honestly this build just makes you a thunder god and it's extremely powerful. Now do you want to feel the true power of creating builds? Well let me tell you about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. With hundreds of incredible looking unique champions, you can equip your favourite ones with some awesome artifacts, upgrades and show off their skills and abilities and then send them into battle against Raid's most toughest enemies. With you on a the team, they'll suffer their worst nightmare. Now Raid has some stunning visuals, animations and champions, but today I want to share with you 4 of my favourite champions to celebrate Raid's 4th anniversary that I would invite to a dinner party, so let's get them at the table. Now first up, we have to invite Ronda. Now Ronda is based off the pro wrestling champion and is a great starter champion for those who got off for free, so she'll be our fighter at the party. Next up, we're inviting Bad El Kazar. With him on the team, he'll be providing our champion support with buffs and applying debuffs to enemies, so he deserves all the food we can give him. As for our third guest, we have Tayru. He's useful almost everywhere and he's going to be our hard hitter on the team, which is going to make our team extremely powerful, so he's definitely joining our dinner table. And then our final champion joining us will be Talia. With her stunning visuals and just purely amazing style, she's is going to be getting all the attention at this table, because not only she looks great, she also has some great skills to offer to the team, which will make our champions flawless. I mean just look at her, she's perfect, she's the one. Now we've got our party going, it's time to celebrate Raid's 4th anniversary, which means you can get your hands on some free gifts, promo codes, as well as the new anniversary themed legendary champion. And if that's not enough, all new players can get a starter pack worth $30, which includes an amazing epic champion, Kellen the Shrike, along with other useful things. And since it's Raid's birthday, they've also got a a special treat for all new and existing players where you can get a bunch of free birthday gifts. All you have to do is click my link down in the description or scan my QR code here on screen and then once you're in the game use my promo code 4 years raid to claim those juicy rewards. So what are you guys waiting for? Click my link down below to get started and let's raid. Okay, now getting back into the video and firstly I want to point out that if you do like these builds and you want to see more like this, then feel free to check out the new Season 20 build playlist down below where you can find all of my latest and best builds currently for Season of Defiance. But for this build today, we're going to be focusing on two things. Firstly, we want to get our super back as quick as possible and secondly, we want to get our grenade back fast as well. The reason for this is because we want to use our super for extra damage during boss fights, especially since we're running the Kuros Exoic and we also want the grenade quickly so that we can use it against tough enemies. Ideally things like overloads so that we can stun them and using just the grenade on a champion alone it's almost enough to fully recharge that grenade because we'll also be getting ionic traces to get that ability energy back too. Now the way you'll use this build in easier content is first use your grenade on a group of enemies. Ideally tough adds, this will generate ionic traces, make you amplified and give you ability energy. Then you'll use the thruster class ability right afterwards and just kill adds with your melee or weapon. Every time you punch an enemy you'll get a chunk of grenade energy back, you'll spawn in all of power which will also give you grenade energy and volatile rounds to void weapons. You'll also get armor charge stacks and on top of this, trigger health regen which is just insane. The amount of stuff we're getting out of this is crazy because you'll just chain between all the abilities over and over which is really consistent in most PvE content. But at the same time, everything combined will get our super back pretty fast. If you're really fast and have a lot of as around, you can get your super in about 30 seconds if not quicker. Now if you're going into master content like this master loss sector here while 20 under the recommended power level, you can't just run around like a god, you can try but 9 times out of 10, you'll die because of how underpowered you are and the lack of consistency on the abilities in those type of content. Mostly because things like your melee just can't insta kill master adds. Now you might see me die a few times here but the point of this build is to get our super back faster than normal and to get those grenades to throw more often as well and even in master content it still works nicely. It won't be as fast but it will still be pretty smooth. 
Now with this build in most activities, I recommend running bad juju if you want to get your super back faster. Use this with a kinetic cypher mod so that you can generate orbs on rapid multi kills, but I wouldn't use this in master content, just because getting multi kills with a pulse rifle is not going to be as easy as it sounds, so I'd stick with your regular loadout, whatever that may be. For me, in most master content, I'd run an outbreak or an arblist, which will cover your anti-barrier champions, and then a void unstoppable scout or overload SMG to cover those champions as well, which will mean we'll be taking advantage of volatile rounds, but having those champions covered won't matter as much anyway because the subclass will cover that, so the loadout really is fully flexible for whatever you want to run. For the subclass, I'm using the Titan Arc Striker subclass with the Thundercrash Super, a really good super to use and I wouldn't run the Fist of Havoc for this build, but I will cover that in a new build at some point since it did get a buff, so stay tuned for that one. But for this one we're going to be using the Thundercrash along with the Thruster class ability as it has a faster cooldown, and we'll use that often to get grenade energy using some mods. Now I'm using the Seismic Strike melee ability, this will blind enemies and stun unstoppables, and then using a Pulse Grenade, we will be able to damage enemies over time. You want to use this because of our first aspect, Touch of Thunder, it will enhance those grenades, and for the Pulse Grenade, it will increase the damage over time and spawn Ionic Traces, which will then give us ability energy, and that energy we get is actually quite a lot. The second aspect is Knockout, the only good thing we really get from this is the Health Regen when killing ads with our melee, the other one is Juggernaut, but you lose a Fragment slot, and you also lose your class ability so I'd strongly avoid that one. For fragments though, we have Spark of Iron so that we can create Ionic Traces when defeating jolted targets, and because we're using Spark of Shock, our grenade will jolt targets anyway, and therefore stun in overloads too. We also have Spark of Magnitude so that those grenades last even longer on the field, and then Spark of Recharge so that we get more energy when we go critical. You can use the Spark of Resistance if you want to, but that's up to you, both fragments are good choices. Now as I mentioned earlier, we are using the Curus of the Falling Star, the Exotic. This will increase our Thunder Crash damage, and give us an overshield when striking a target. A really good exotic to use, but your alternative is the nerfed Heart of Immerse Light for buffing your abilities. There are quite a few good exotics to use, but those will be for completely different builds in the future, so I'd stick to using just Heart and Cure Us for this build. Now since this is a grenade build, you want to run 3 bomber mods in the class. This will help us get your grenade back even quicker when we use our thruster. You'll also want a heavy handed mod in the arm so that we can generate orbs on melee kills. Either run that, or if going into endgame content, run a firepower mod instead to generate them on grenade kills, but throw in 2 impact induction mods too. For the legs, you want 3 innovation mods. This might be a bit overkill, but it will actually help you in things like Master or Grandmaster Nightfalls, just to get that grenade back a little bit quicker. For the chest, I would run your damage resist mods. I am running the emergency reinforcement mod, which requires armor charge stacks, which we'll get from those orbs that we pick up, and this will just give us extra damage resistance when our shields break, but the very last thing we have are a hands-on and ashes to assets in the helmet for extra super energy. Now if you aren't using bad juju and you just want to run a normal void weapon like funnel web for the extra ad clear, then you'll want the Volatile Flow perk in the artifact so that we can benefit from that when we collect orbs. And on top of that, we will also benefit from Shadow Orbs to create even more orbs, and then Bricks from Beyond to make heavy ammo with our Void weapons. So if you want to copy the artifact setup, feel free to do so, but it shouldn't impact the main aspect of this build design. This here is the mod screen, again if you want to copy it, but there will be dim links down below too. Now the last thing you want to do with this build is make sure you have 100 Resilience and 100 Discipline as a minimum, so that you can quickly get those abilities back passively, without relying on mods and other abilities. But guys, honestly, an amazing build to use in all types of content, and you definitely need to give us one a try. But if this ain't the build you're after, then be sure to check out the full playlist below for some other insane builds. And until then guys, have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next build. Peace out guys.